All right, well, this is me and uh, Pastor Mark, and probably wondering what I brought here. Well, since I'm a children's pastor, uh, I had to do something, you know, to bring that children's to the front, of course, because they're the best crowd. Well, I, you guys are the best today, right? So, uh, actually, one of the, the senior adults says, are you preaching? Well, you got you to gotta do that thing, that, that thing. You know, you got you to gotta do one of those things that you do. So I'm going to do it. All right, so I, so I had to roll this up so it wouldn't be a distraction to people because if they see stuff that, that I have up here, sometimes it, it just becomes a distraction for them. So, so anyway, I thought I'd bring this, and that's the reason pulpit is back a little bit so that everyone can see what I'm doing. Now, this is very important that you watch and see, look, don't look at your neighbor, you know, be talking about it, because uh, you'll miss it, okay? So, so you, you got, everybody paying attention? Everybody paying attention here? Okay, got, got a few of you. All right, well, this is called the Amazing Color-Changing Feather Tube. Yeah, that's a big one. The Amazing Color-Changing Feather Tube. Now, what do you think it does? Yeah, it changes colors for what? Feather, right? Okay. And, and there is a feather in here, by golly. And I'm just going to pull it out. It's actually a feather on a stick. Now, what color is that? Red, right? Now, repeat it one more time for me. Red, right? Okay, so I'm going to put it in here. And um, when I put it in there, how I change the color is I have to snap my finger. So when I snap my finger, it turned to the color green. It's green. And when I snap my finger again, it turns back to the color red. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? Okay. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to do it again. So there's some non-believers out there. So when I snap my finger, it turns, that one was red, right? Now it turned to green. Okay? So it's green now. Anybody believe that? Three. Okay, so if I snap my finger again, it turns back to the color red. Isn't that wonderful? Man, that's cool. You guys aren't believing me here. So, oh, you want to see it when it's green? Okay, all right, well, let's see what happens. Yes, I'm going to put it back in here. Now, I snap my finger. Sure enough, it turned color green, right? And then I, oh, wait a minute. We weren't going to do that part, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take this out here. Uh, oops. Trying to pull it out of there. It's stuck. It's really stuck. Okay, here we go. Got it. All right. It's green. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? I'm not getting too good at laughs here, but you guys think there's another one in there. You can trick some of the people some of the time, and most of them all the time, but some of them you just can't do it any at all. So there is another color, another feather in there. I'll go ahead and take that out so that you get, what color was that, red? Okay, yeah, and here's the other red. This isn't red. Okay, something's, something. Uh -huh. so, so you think there's another one in there? Well, let me show it to you. There's not one in there. Okay. Yeah, this is where you're supposed to go, ooh. <laughs> okay. This is part of my sermon, by the way. I wanted you to know that. But I'm going to wrap it up so it doesn't uh, distract anyone right now. So, because uh, it has a tendency to do that sometimes. Okay. Now. So, some people think, oh yeah, I've got it figured out. I'm going to walk this forward here. I don't know how Glenn gets it up there, just lifting it up. He's super strong or something. Um, today, I'm calling my sermon Vantage Point. Vantage Point. Now, did you figure it out? Maybe you thought you figured it out. Maybe you did figure it out. You know, or did I trick you? I did trick somebody out there. <laughs> you know, and um, some may pull, maybe think that there's a little button on the bottom of one of those that changes the color of the feather. I don't know. 
Maybe there's lined, that tube is lined with a different color ink or something. Uh, you know, so maybe it's the way I leaned the tube a little bit that changed that color. You know, I forgot to do one thing. Uh, you guys did pretty good at it, but I was wanting a little better applause, and this is what we're going to show here. I'm going to see how you guys clap your hands. So I want everybody to take your hands like this, okay? This is an exercise for everybody to get your hands. They've been up in the air for quite a while, so you get a blood flow in here. So, so when I go like this, and it, my hands come together, they cross, I want you to go like that one time, okay? All right? All right, are you ready? We'll try it. Well, that's not bad. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, okay, good. Oh, <laughs> little, little ahead here. Let's try it again. Okay. We'll get going a little bit faster this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, that's good enough for the fun and games here today. But, but anyway... <clears throat> I want to pray. We need to pray right now, okay? So get back on track here. Lord, we are so thankful that we have come here to this church. And Lord, we have the opportunity of, of worshiping and praising you. I pray that you will help me as I speak today to give exactly what you would want me to say. And Lord, we just give you the honor and glory. And bless the people here today, Lord, that they will receive the message you have for each one of them in their hearts. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. All right. So everyone has their own point of view, their own vantage point. It might have been different for those people sitting on this side than it was for this side or up there. Uh, so we all have a different vantage point of different things in our life. And, you know, we can see these different points of view a lot of times in the world that we live in. As a matter of fact, you see, you've seen it a lot this last year. Uh, you see it in the news all the time. You know, you have CNN, they've got their point of view. You got Fox News, you, they've got their point of view. And you got uh, NBC and MSNBC, and you got CBS, and you got Newsmax. You know, news is almost not just facts anymore. It's, it's an opinion. You guys get that feeling sometimes? You turn on the TV and, man, they, they, well, opinions. Even in government, you have the left, you have the right, you have the far left, you have the moderates. Which way? You have special groups, you see it. You have your liberals, you have your conservatives, your pro-life, your pro-choice, your NRA, the BLM. LGBTQ, RSTU, VWXYZ, however, however it goes. Everyone has their own point of view, which is fine. But nowadays, I feel one group, I, I feel for them, is our law enforcement people. First of all, I really appreciate our law enforcement. We have some that go to the church here. So much. You know, our system makes it almost impossible for them to do their job sometimes. You know, they're here to protect us, but yet there are so many kinks and loopholes that they are set up. They are set up to lose many of the times. If they do something wrong, they lose. If they do something right, they still might lose. You know, it just doesn't seem, seem fair. It's, it's frustrating for them. It's frustrating for us to see that as well. But there's also this sort of thing that has happened in Bible times. And I want to read a story to you today out of the Bible. It's a certain version. And I chose this version because it's a little different. And I would like for you just to listen and not really, you can look it up if you want, but it's probably a different, I'm going to read it out of the message uh, version. And it's going to take a little bit to read, so you just have to bear with me. But I want you to focus on listening and understanding the story that's going on here. It's a true story. 
It's in John chapter 9. It says, walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There's no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here. Working while the sun shines. When the night falls, the work day is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light, and I am the world's light. He said this and then spit in the dust, in the dust made a clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes, and said, go wash at the pool of uh, Siloam. The men went and washed and saw. Soon the town was buzzing. His relatives and those who year after year had seen him as a blind man begging were saying, Why isn't this the man we knew who sat here and begged? Others said, It's him, all right. But others objected. objected. It's not the same man at all. It just looks like him. They said, How did, how did your eyes get opened? A man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it in my eyes and told me, Go and wash. I did what he said, and when I washed, I saw. I don't know. So where is he? I don't know. They marched the man to the Pharisees. This day when Jesus made the paste and healed his blindness was a Sabbath. The Pharisees grilled him again on how he could come and see. He said, he put a clay paste on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. And some of the Pharisees said, Obviously, this man can't be from God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others countered, How can a bad man do miraculous God-revealing things like this? So there was split and division in their ranks. They came back to the blind men. Man, you're the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about him? And he said, he is a prophet. The Jews didn't believe it. Didn't believe the man was born to begin with. So they called the parents of the man, who now bright-eyed with sight, they asked him, Is this your son, the one you say was born blind? So how is it that he now sees? His parents said, We know he is our son, and we know he was born blind, but we don't know how he came to see having a clue about who opened his eyes. Why don't you ask him? He's a grown man and can speak for himself. His parents were talking like this because they were intimidated by the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who took a stand that this was the Messiah would be kicked out of the meeting place. That's why his parents said, ask him, he's a grown man. So then they called the man back a second time. The man who had been blind and told him, Give credit to God. We know this man is an imposter. He replied, I know nothing about that one way or the other. But I know one thing for sure. I was blind. Now I see. They said, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I've told you over and over and over, and you haven't listened. Why, do you want to hear it again? Are you so eager to become his disciples? It's getting a little funny there. With that, they jumped all over him. I mean, not literally, you know, okay. They jumped all over him. You might be a disciple of that man, but we're disciples of Moses. We know for sure that God spoke to Moses, but we have no idea where this man even comes from. The man replied, now this is amazing. That's where the feather tube came in. Okay. You claim to know nothing about him, but the fact is he opened my eyes. It's well known that God isn't at the beck and call of sinners, but listens carefully to anyone who lives in reverence and does his will. That someone opened the eyes of a man born blind was never been heard of ever. If this man didn't come from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. They said, you're nothing but dirt. How dare you take that tone with us? Then they threw him out in the street. Now, 
Jesus heard that they would throw him out and went and found him. And he asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man said, Point him out to me, sir, so I can believe in him. And Jesus said, You're looking at him right now. Don't you recognize my voice? Master, I believe, the man said, and worshipped him. There's a couple more verses, but I'm going to leave it right there. This is the story of the man born blind, is what we know, and many of you have probably heard that uh, many times before. But when I, remind, when I read this, it reminds me of all the different views that man comes up with in our world today. So let's put our investigative caps on right now. You just go like this. Help me out, okay? Yeah. You can tell I'm a children's pastor because I've got to have action, okay? So um, that man comes up with. So let's, uh, yeah, okay, that, that happened in the Bible. Our question we are proposing here is, what do they see when they look at this man? What do they see when they look at this man? There are a number of different groups in this passage. I want to take a look at these very quickly. The first one is the disciples. The disciples were the first ones on the scene. They saw an opportunity to solve an issue. Kind of an age-old issue or debate. The theological issue here was, was this man blind from his sin or his parents' sin? They wanted to know. You know, there's scientists and doctors and professors, etc., etc., are all trying to understand the things of this world and what makes it tick and what makes it continue and what makes it going to crash someday. You know, the question of why or how or where or who or what always surfaces. We want the answer of all these things. You know, what happened to dinosaurs? What about global warming? Who started the pandemic? And why does a piece of plywood cost over 100 bucks? And gas is getting almost four bucks already, too. You know, why all these? We, we ponder these. We talk about them all the time, don't we? Don't we talk? Haven't you said? Complain if you're a carpenter, I'm, I'm sure, building a house or something. Why, why a, something that cost 30 bucks a couple years ago is like over $100 now? You know, not everything is logical to us, or even should be. We can't really understand everything. Or do we need to understand everything? No, we don't. Where did God originally come from? He was always here. Now how can we imagine that? How can we think that? That God never had a beginning. He's never going to have an end. Sometimes, you know, we're dealing with an infinite God compared to a finite mind. We don't have to understand that. What we have to do is come in faith and believe what God has. And especially in this case, it really didn't matter to understand all these things. But the disciples wanted to know. Number two, our next group, the onlookers. His family, not necessarily his family, but his friends. So what did they see? They saw nothing. Well, they did actually see something, but they're thinking nothing. Because they knew what was coming. You know, this is a classic case of, don't involve me in this. It isn't my problem, right? It's not my problem. You guys remember the old show, show a TV show way back in the, I don't know, 60s, 70s or so? It was uh, Hogan's Heroes. Remember that? Some of you old people, you young ones, need to have no idea probably. They should watch a lot of reruns. You know, and there was a, a sergeant, uh, what was his name? I had wrote it down here. Sergeant Schultz. And, um, you know, whenever they came across an issue, because they were always doing stuff that they weren't supposed to do, Hogan's Heroes guys, and uh, what would he say? 
he says, I know nothing. I know nothing. I know nothing. Remember that? Just imagine him saying that. Visualize him saying that. You just got to watch the show, guys. Okay, you know, go back and watch that. That's kind of what they were saying, these guys, these onlookers. You know, I really didn't want to get involved. So some people just don't want to get involved. That's right. Many people are just content with sitting on the sidelines and doing their own thing. And that's what these onlookers were doing. I'm just too busy. I don't know what to do. I don't have the resources to do it. I'll have to pray about it. You ever heard that? You know, that's good. And we do need to pray about things. But there's some things we don't need to pray about. Right? Because it's stated in the Bible what we're supposed to do. Okay? So, I'm not saying still don't pray about it. You can pray about it. But don't use it as an excuse. Okay? You know, like the, the Nike um, slogan. You know, the shoes with the whoosh on it. Remember their logo from years past? Remember what it's called, anyone? Just do it. <laughs> just get out there and do it. Don't ask questions. Just do it. Of course, you've got to be careful on how you say that but, and what it is. But if it's a good thing, just get out there and, and do it. You know, because if you sacrifice something for God, he will always repay you for it. Amen. He will. In one way or another. Trust God to guide you. Now, the Pharisees is the next group. So the Pharisees. So what did they see? They saw a way to discredit Jesus. Their view was obstructed by their own ambitions. Their ambitions were is they wanted to get Jesus out of there. They wanted to remove Jesus from this whole scene. So they wanted to get rid of him. They wanted to discredit him in this. So they, they found or sought out some reason to bring this up and to put him down. And they did. You know, at wicked ways will never work in the long run. They just won't. They couldn't see the forest through the trees. It was kind of like an optical illusion for them. And, you know, I got a picture I want to show you real quick up here. Go ahead and shine that up there if you would. Okay, that first one. I want you to take a look at that, and you maybe have seen this before. And uh, can, you, can you see it? You don't have to say anything to spill the beans just yet, but what do you see? In your mind, what do you see? Just look at it. Look at it. Okay? All right. Does anybody see the duck? Yeah. Does anybody see the rabbit? Oh, you guys are pretty good. I didn't know you guys were that sharp. I'm just joking. <laughs> joking with you. Just joking. Okay, let's go to one more here. All right. This one I hadn't seen before. Let's see if you can find the two images that are there. See that? Okay, does so anybody see kind of the, the man's face from the side profile? Yeah, I see that. Does anybody see the Eskimo? Wow, you guys are great. You guys are great. It's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of point of view. It's what you are seeing in the situation. Sometimes something may be happening and something else might be intended or really happening. So we have to watch these things. So the Pharisees, they use legalities for their own selfish ambitions. They wanted to get something accomplished. And they did so using a loophole, a le lo uh, legality. You know, they hardened their hearts to the truth that was happening, what was really going on. Now just think about it. Don't we see a lot of this in the world today, too? Yeah, we do. 
I just get really tired of, of seeing it a lot of times in the world of people will try to get their own way and changing, try to change the perspective of everything or of something just to make their point of view right, even if it's wrong. And that's what the Pharisees were doing. Okay, number four, the parents. Let's take a look at the parents here. The parents, what did they see? They saw trouble coming and chose not to get involved for a reason. You know, they were looking for the, the easy way out. Actually, they were in between a rock and a hard place here. There's a pesky fly up here. Have you seen that? I might just get my fly gun here or something pretty soon. Okay. Um, they were looking, they, they were between a, a rock and a hard place. Either they circumvent the truth or get kicked out. Because if they had been known and they spoke in a way that said, or, or the, the other people had said, let it be known that anybody who backed up Jesus and were trying to get him to be the Messiah or confess that he was going to be the Messiah and he was doing all these miraculous things that they were going to kick him out. Okay. Well, they didn't want to be that way. So what did they do? They didn't deny the truth, but they circumvented the truth. They tried to take the easy way out here. I just wonder if later they might have regretted their decision in that process and what they did. You know, they had the opportunity, but they were not willing to pay the price for it, what came along with it. Okay, we're going to go on. The next is Jesus. What did he see in the man? He saw a needy soul. He saw a needy soul. So what did Jesus do? Three things that I'm going to point out today. Number one, he took the initiative. He took the initiative. Jesus put himself in a position to serve others. He did that his entire life. And we have to take the same attitude as well. We have to take the attitude of, it starts with me. You know, nobody else was going to do anything for that man. Now that it happened all those years. The disciples were with him. They were waiting. They weren't going to do anything. The parents, well, they probably prayed for him too, but they didn't do anything at that day. And the onlookers, and of course the Pharisees, they weren't fair, you see. Okay. That's, a, that's an old one. You know, I found that God uses one person at a time so much. And he wants to use me. He wants to use you. You know, it's even... You know, I've, you've probably heard in the past, too, that it's mathematically or statistically possible to win the whole world for Jesus in 34 years. I figured it up on my calculator. I used to be a math teacher. And in 34 years, if every person, starting with one, would win a person to the Lord every year, and then t that person would win a person to the Lord every year, it grows exponentially. In 34 years, the whole world would be one for Jesus. One person at a time. The important thing we see here is that Jesus took the initiative. He didn't wait for it to happen. And we have to say the same thing. It starts with me. I've got to do something. Okay? I've got to do something. Don't point it at somebody else. Point it at yourself. Number two, he met the need. Jesus healed a man. No questions asked. You know, it may need mean uh, time, using some of our time, maybe our money, our comforting. Oh, I was going to go back to that money thing. I was telling somebody the other day about 
money has a real grasp on us sometimes, and it's hard for us to, to get it away. And I used to know a pastor, he's one of my former pastors, not Pastor Jason, by the way, he won't do this. Um, he's a pastor, and he says, yeah, we got a, this grip on our money, we can't let it go. He says, you just got to let it go. He says, just let it go, brother. Just let it go like that, you know. Just, just <laughs> I just, just thought of that right now. Okay. Take, sometimes it takes your money. Sometimes it takes a comforting word. Maybe it's a smile. Some assistance that you can offer them. Love. It might be just a listening ear to render your ear so that they can vent or get it off their, their mind. Sometimes we have to meet the physical need before the spiritual need. And we see that all the time with Jesus, and we see it right here in this scripture as well. The last one, number three for Jesus, is he followed up. This is always a hard one for us to do too. You know, after hearing what happened to the man, Jesus sought him out. Let me, let me just read this portion here. Um, it says here, Jesus heard that they had thrown the man out and went and found him and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man said, Well, point him out to me, sir, so I can believe in him. Because he couldn't see before. And Jesus said, You're looking at him right at him now. Don't you recognize my voice? And then the man said, Master, I believe. Master, I believe. And he worshiped him. So, he followed up. He met his need first. And then when he came back, what happened to the man? He became a believer. He said, I believe. I believe. And then he worshiped him. Praise God. You know, sometimes it takes us to meet a need in some way. It doesn't have to just be about money. Sometimes we get caught up with that kind of thing. But maybe it's that listening ear. Maybe it's the love or the smile that you have when they come into church or wherever. Now, there's one more. There's one more. That is you. You. Now, it does not speak your name in here, okay? It doesn't say, Pastor Mark did this, no. But you, because the Bible is written for us. You. What do you see in the blind man? What do you see? with him. The question is, what is your vantage point? Put yourself in their place. The disciples, the onlookers, the Pharisees, the parents, and then put yourself in the, in the vantage point of Jesus and what he did. And that's the one we need to watch. We all have faults. And I'm not pointing my finger at you because I'm pointing it at myself, too. It's something that we, we work on. And it's not a fault for you. I didn't want to come across negative, like, oh, this is what you're doing wrong, blah, 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 blah. No, I want to point out more of what Jesus did. That he took the initiative to do it. He met the need, and then he followed up with it. So how do you look at the blind man? Through whose eyes do you see him? You know, with the exception of Jesus, each group saw the man in a perspective of self-fulfillment. You know, that's one thing I love about this church, Rivers Church. It's, I love this church. It's my church. Got married here. Got baptized here. I go to church here. <laughs> but I love the people 
that, that go here because they see through the eyes. You see through the eyes of Jesus. By taking an active, assertive approach to reaching and ministering to people. Everybody is different. We all have our talents. We all have our faults. But working together, we can make a difference in our community, in this world. But maybe you're the one that's having some difficulty right now. It's not too late to make a, a change in that. It's never too late. I'd like for everyone to stand right now, if you would, if you can. And I want you to do a self-reflection in your own life right now. And maybe you need to tell yourself some way Somehow, some manner of doing this week, I am going to make a change or a difference in someone else's life. No matter how small or big, I want to make an impact in somebody's life. I'm not saying that you have to bring them to the Lord in salvation. That would be great. But I'm not saying that. I'm saying I want you to think in your own self, how can I make a difference? What can I do? No matter how big, how small, somehow, some way, can I give a smile to someone? Can I give them a helping hand? Can I say something to them that will make a difference in their life? Can you say that to yourself today? And this will include everyone. Say to yourself and mean it and say, how can I make a difference? Jesus made a difference in a person's life that day. Yes, he did cure his blindness. Yes, and I'm sure that man was forever grateful. But I look at what ha happened after that is when Jesus found him again. And when he found out who he was, he said, Master, I believe and I worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In a moment, I'm going to ask for as many as can to come forward and, and, and to pray to God and ask, what can I do? Or maybe at your seat or somewhere else. But before I do, I want to see if there may be one, there's one more person that I haven't talked about yet, and that is the blind man. The blind man. How did the blind man see himself? How did the blind man see himself? How did he respond? And it shows there in that last few things. He said, there it says, he became a believer. He received God's gift. And in verse 38, he proclaimed, Master, I believe. And then he worshiped Jesus. Now, if there's someone here that has never received the gift that God has given, Everybody, God has given everybody that gift. And that gift is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for us, for our sins. Because see, God couldn't have any sin in heaven. There isn't sin there. So he had to make a way for our sin to be removed. Well, that sin can be removed 
by the blood of Jesus, God sent his son, Jesus, on the earth as a man. He was perfect. He was sinless. And he paid the price for our sin to be removed. 